Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of a horror films from 2021, titled The Cursed. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film opens with a view of French soldiers sheltering inside trenches, amid a heated battle against Germany in 1917. As they make a run across no man's land, many of the soldiers fall, including one particular soldier who afterwards gets rushed to the medical tent, because he has three bullet holes in his abdomen. Okay, we have three. Hold him down. A doctor manages to remove all of them successfully. But upon removing the third bullet, he realizes something strange. There is a fourth bullet inside the man. The doctor promptly pulls it out. There's no German bullet. And the doctor is right, it is not a German bullet, but rather a silver one. We move to the next scene where a woman named Charlotte arrives at a mansion, and inquires about someone's condition with one of the maids. As she enters the mansion, she looks at a family picture featuring a man and two children, and we get taken to flashback of events that took place 35 years ago. Charlotte was still a child at the time, growing up with her little brother Edward, and their wealthy landlord parents, Seamus, and Isabel Laron. Not far from their mansion, a group of gypsy settlers reside. We are then shown a view of someone making a denture filled with silver fangy teeth. A gypsy woman claims that the silver teeth has protected their people for generations. The silver teeth must be super important because the gypsy woman puts it on an altar and prays to it. Back to Charlotte's family, that night the town's elders including Seamus Laron, are discussing about getting rid of the gypsies from the land nearby. In fact, the gypsies claim that the land belongs to them, but the town's elders don't seem to want to let go of the land and have already offered them something. Right that next morning, Seamus Laron sends his men to attack the gypsy settlement. The men burn it to the ground. Afterwards, they rejoice and even take a picture alongside the dead bodies. The silver teeth are then brought forth to the raider's leader, along with the gypsy lady we saw in the last scene. She swears that something bad will befall these raiders for what they've done. This offends the raider so he orders his men to bury the gypsy woman along with the silver teeth. They apprehend a man who is either the lady's son, brother or husband though I'm not sure because the film never explained who's who. The apprehended gypsy man gets his hands and feet gruesomely mutilated. The raiders fill his sleeves with hay and cover his head with a bag. They then display him like a scarecrow. The raiders dig a pit right under the scarecrow, and bury the gypsy woman alive along with the rest of the dead gypsies. The night after the gypsy massacre, little Charlotte has a nightmare about the place. In the next scene, a pathologist named John McBride pulls up his horse at an inn, and enters it. Upon checking into a room, he asks are there reports of gypsies in the area. But the receptionist who actually knows about it refuses to answer. When McBride moves to sit down for supper at the inn, a police lieutenant Alfred Moliere comes up to him, and takes note about how McBride was asking about gypsies in the area. Lieutenant Moliere tells McBride that the town really could use McBride's help as a pathologist. We then move to the next scene, where Charlotte's brother, Edward, treads through the woods, and finds the gypsy scarecrow. He gets a strange urge that prompts him to scour the ground, where he finds the silver teeth. And then he sees the gypsy woman in the distance. It turns out that Edward have a similar nightmare to the one Charlotte had last night, complete with sleepwalking. On the next day, when the town's children are playing together, a boy named Timmy tells Charlotte. I've seen it. 
Charlotte, Edward, along with the rest of the children then follow Timmy to a location. Tommy tells them not to tell their father about this, because no one is allowed to enter the area. Here we learn that all of the children have dreamt about the scarecrow and the silver teeth, ever since the night of the massacre. Timmy then suggests that they should dig up the ground, but all the other kids are too scared to do it, so he does it alone. Right when he starts digging, he begins hearing ominous whispers. And as expected, the silver teeth are there. It seems that now Timmy is possessed to use the teeth. He then attacks Edward, who immediately tells everyone to run for their lives. Charlotte returns home in a panic state, followed by two servants carrying a sick-looking Edward. A doctor is immediately summoned to examine Edward inside a dark bedroom. According to the mother, sunlight seems to hurt Edward now. The doctor makes nothing of it, and later simply concludes that Edward suffers from an infection, caused by a wild animal bite wound, and after taking some medication he should be fine. Thank you, doctor. That night, Charlotte has yet another dream about the scarecrow field along with flashes of Edward getting attacked, but this time it is even scarier. Worried for her brother's safety, Charlotte decides to visit Edward's bedroom, but then... Her scream wakes up her father Seamus Laron who immediately goes to check on Edward, but unfortunately Edward is now gone. Seamus Laron sets up a search party, and they sweep through the woods, but they return from the search empty-handed. Back in town, the police lieutenant knocks on John McBride's door, and tells him about how a boy, aka Edward is reported missing and that they could use McBride's help. The lieutenant thought McBride might be interested, because this might be connected to a so-called gypsy incident that happened in the area recently. Meanwhile, Charlotte decides to visit the chapel to pray, right when she sees Timmy there. He signals for her to follow him, and the two sneak into the confession booth to talk alone. Timmy claims to not recall anything that happened, and asks Charlotte what's wrong with Edward. You used the teeth to buy Edward. The shaken Timmy then recites a Bible verse about how Judas was paid 30 pieces of silver, to betray Jesus, and somehow concludes that the teeth must be made out of the same silver, that was used to pay Judas. He's also convinced that they are all going to pay for the mistakes their elders made. We were going to die. Overwhelmed, Timmy storms away from the chapel, and sees Edward staring at him from the edge of the woods. Timmy runs after him. It appears that Edward has mangled his hand. Timmy runs back into the woods and hides inside an abandoned cabin. McBride has now arrived at the Laurent's residence, accompanied by Lieutenant Moliere. Seamus leads the men to the woods to examine a heavily mangled dead body, who is none other than Timmy. McBride the pathologist promptly gets to work, and examines the dead body. He deduces that the boy was killed by a wild animal, specifically a wolf. Sadly, according to Lieutenant Moliere there is nothing much the police can do but file a report, because the country is currently in the middle of a cholera pandemic, and many towns are shutting their gates. Regardless, McBride wants to stay around and investigate further. He later interviews Seamus Laron, who catches him up on everything that has happened so far. He then decides to look around the house, and upon seeing a mark on the door. We need to board all the windows on the ground floor shut. Later that night, McBride dreams about the gypsy scarecrow. He digs the ground and finds the silver teeth. Not only that, he sees the gypsy woman, and then his wife and child. On the next night, instead of sleeping, John McBride decides to scrape dried blood from the mark on the door, and study it. He mixes it with his own blood, and discovers a parasite-like substance surrounding his blood. Upon hearing the strange sound, McBride goes to investigate. 
He sees a creature through the gaps of a boarded up window. Therefore, McBride immediately asks Seamus Laron to fetch his rifle. Realizing how dear the situation is, Seamus decides to summon the town's elders to his residence. The elders are then informed of a possible wolf roaming around town, and they begin talking about a beast in the town of Javadan that was so dangerous, that they had to summon the army to take it down. They suspect that a similar situation could be happening here, but the army would not be deployed unless the situation is confirmed. For the time being, all they can do is stay home, and board their windows shut. On the next day, three townsfolk decide to step out, and work in the fields despite everything that's been going on. Hearing the strange sound, one of them attempts to investigate its source. After one of them left, it turns out that the other guy has been attacked by a strange creature. Jacob? They ended up getting attacked by the so-called wolf. The woman named Anne-Marie manages to slip away, and makes it back into town. McBride and Seamus Laron's men are summoned to investigate the scene, and are informed that Anne-Marie lost a lot of blood because she was bitten. Hearing this, McBride rushes into town hoping he could contain Anne, but he is too late. Oh, she, she was just here. Realizing that there are going to be at least two werewolves around now, McBride asks Seamus to tell all the townsfolk to evacuate the town and find shelter in the church immediately. Meanwhile, the bitten Anne-Marie is now treading through the woods. She walks into the river, at which point she begins to transform her form into something. After all the townsfolk are evacuated, McBride returns to the Laron residence and has a conversation with Isabel Laron. He tells her about how his wife and daughter was killed by a cursed wolf in Javadan. Afterwards, a group of gypsy travelers came to Javadan, and claimed that the curse had run its course, and it must now be contained in gypsy silver. McBride tried to track these gypsies but lost them somewhere along the way. Isabel tries telling him about the gypsy massacre that her husband did, but they get interrupted. And the eldest. That's enough! On the next day, McBride decides to take his investigation to the next level, he goes into the woods just as he saw in his dream, and lays traps for the wolves. Somewhere along the way, he falls asleep out of exhaustion, and when he wakes up, he sees the strange creature near him. Luckily, he manages to defeat the creature. McBride then takes the wolf back into the Laron residence, and lays it on a table. He begins dissecting its flesh, and the elders stare in bewilderment at the sight of something moving underneath. As McBride unravels it, one of the elders recognizes the figure inside as Anne-Marie, but McBride insists that she is no longer alive, and that there is nothing they can do to help her now. McBride then explains that everyone who gets bitten will turn until the curse has had its fill. McBride begins asking who is the woman buried in the field, but Seamus remains to be in denial and refuses to answer. He promises to hunt the beast and end whatever this is alone. Determined to find the answer, McBride goes to Isabel Laron, and asks the same question. Unlike her husband, Isabel is helpful. She decides to tell McBride about the massacre. He then comes up to Charlotte, who finally opens up now, and shows him where the silver teeth are. Meanwhile, Seamus Laron has gathered a hunting party, determined to hunt the werewolf himself in the woods. Little did Seamus knows the werewolf actually roams just outside his home. The maid gets bitten but survives. 
We all can guess where this would lead. On the other side of town, John McBride is at the blacksmith, melting the silver teeth down to silver bullets. That night, Seamus returns from his search empty-handed, and unaware of the bitten maid in his home. McBride has also returned home, and Seamus who is arrogant and self-assured tells him that he must leave tomorrow, because the situation is under control now. They get into an argument, with the greedy Seamus Laron refusing to admit that he was wrong for killing the gypsies. Regardless of what Seamus thinks, McBride doesn't care. I'm staying here till the army arrives. Later that night, Isabel Laron tucks in her daughter Charlotte into bed. At the same time, the bitten maid is only getting sicker and sicker. Seamus hears noises coming from the vent. Now alert, Seamus arms himself with a hunting rifle, and patrols around the house. He visits the maid's room, and is confused to find that she isn't in bed. It seems that the maid is already transformed into the werewolf, and begins attacking Seamus. McBride heads upstairs upon hearing the gunshot, only to find the maid's quarter burning. He heads back downstairs, and finds a scared Isabel. McBride rushes outside to go after Seamus into the cellar. It appears that Seamus has been bitten. Not wanting to turn, he decides to set himself on fire. Back inside the house, Isabel and Charlotte are trying to escape the burning house. They manage to escape unscathed while the mansion burns behind them. They then enter the woods and begin heading toward the church. Luckily, they made it to the church unscathed. One of the elders then informs McBride that the army is coming tomorrow, so all they have to do is wait. Unfortunately, later that night when everyone is asleep, Isabel begins hearing strange noises coming from outside. It is Edward, calling for her and asking for her help. Blinded by her love for her son, Isabel opens the church door. Chaos ensues when the werewolf jumps inside and begins to attack. The townsfolk are panicking left and right, but Isabel is still adamant on protecting her son. All of the sudden, werewolf Edward lunges at her and attacks her, leaving McBride no choice but to shoot his silver bullet, effectively hitting both infected Isabel and Edward. With the silver bullet lodged inside, Edward returns to his human form. It is at this point we learn that the soldier in the beginning of the movie is adult Edward, and that he dies in future, right after the bullets are pulled out. In her last moments, Isabel embraces her son and reminisces the memories she shared with him. She pulls him to her arms, and takes her last breath. In the next scene, McBride walks up to a morose Edward, and tells him that from now on he and Charlotte would live with him. We are then taken back to the future, where it turns out adult Charlotte is visiting an old McBride. And this is where the movie ends. Okay guys. That's all the recap for The Curse 2021. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.